Dear readers of Brussels Diplomatic, we're here in the Residence Palace in Brussels with the Oops Station for the General Assembly of the, um, the, 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 the Spirit Industry in Europe. Mr. Sasson, good, good evening. Good evening. Uh, well, you all know the new um, President of Spirit Europe. Would you like to, to give us a general overview of the um, Spirit Industry in Europe nowadays? Well, the spirits industry is a very traditional industry in all member states of the European Union. There is one national drink, which is usually a spirit. And um, if you look at the business, if, if you look at the companies, there are many family-owned businesses which have been active for sometimes hundreds of years. Uh, on the one hand, so very local, very, uh, very rooted in, uh, in their society. And uh, on the other hand, you see the multinational uh, companies. They're also European. Diageo is uh, British. Tenorica is, of course, uh, uh, French. And a number of other uh, French successful uh, companies. And LVMH, Remy Control, etc. So it, it is diverse, but it's very rooted into society, it's very rooted into the preferences of the consumer. Um, and spirits from Europe are by far, uh, in Europe, the, they're by far the biggest producers in the world. And regarding the, um, the economical situation, what can you say about the, um, the way how things are going at the moment, or how business is going? Well, the economic situation is not very, uh, very good at the moment. Uh, we have been in, um, in, in, in difficulty for a number of years. We, that is not just the spirit sector, but it goes for a lot of sectors. Um, as a result, consumers are reluctant to spend their money on uh, spirits. So we are facing a situation uh, where there is a decline, in general there is a decline of consumer buying spirits, which is not good. Um, that is um, also affected by uh, governments needing money and excises are a very important source for obtaining this uh, money so what you usually see is that excises go up consumer preferences tend to go the other way around so we, double, we have a sort of double challenge to meet and is there today, this is my last question, is there today a pan-European policy you sometimes have to, um, let's say, to correct or to amend? On a European level, decisions are taken uh, with regard to exports, and uh, export of spirits is a tremendous success. Oh, in 2012, there were an uh, export value of total of 10 billion euros, which is which was even a strong increase in comparison to 2011. Um, so the exports are doing really, really well. And in, on that level, the role of the European institution is huge, because if you have to negotiate free trade agreements or access to any sort of country, uh, that's where the European Union steps in. Where Parliament has a role to play, where the Commission has a role to play, where the Council has a role to play. If you look at alcohol policy, how to deal with stuff like taxation, uh, advertising and the distribution, the, 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 the selling points of uh, spirits, there is no such thing as a pan-European alcohol policy. So it is diverse. Um, and the, the third area where Europe is uh, really important in that uh, for setting the quality regulations. So it's not allowed to put whiskey on the label if it's not real whiskey. And all those quality requirements are defined by European regulation. And that's very important. Thank you very much, Mr. President. And we wish you a very fruitful mandate as your President of Space of Europe. Thank you very much. And good luck.